Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to use CSS variables to customize the theme of your application for your users. So this is an example here. I've got Jumpstart Pro, the SAS template um, loaded up and uh, commonly will want to have colors that are attached to an account so that you can change the default color that maybe buttons or text or other things um, like the outlines of things might need to change to. So we're gonna add a color field here using the Rails color field helper, which you may not have even uh, realized. The browsers have a color picker that is built in. We can use that, save it to the database, and then use CSS variables to change the way that our application looks um, based upon that CSS uh, custom element. So let's dig in. First off, we're gonna need to generate a migration. We can add color to the account model, and color is going to be just a string and we're going to run Rails DB migrate to save that. What we're gonna save in that color field is the actual hex value, um, but you could also change this if you wanted to store like RGBA, and you could save you know, uh, those separately or something like that. But we're just gonna do the simple hex value for our color picker. So in order to save that, we want to make sure that we permit the color param in our accounts controller, which I already had pulled up here. And we can go to our accounts form, and we can add a field for the color. So I'm gonna do that just above the avatar here. We're gonna say the field name is color, text field name is color, and we're gonna change that text field to a color field. And then we're gonna also set the style so that we can have height of 40 pixels because right now it will just render really short if we don't. So this is gonna allow us to use a color picker and we can choose red or blue or purple or whatever um, that we might want and we can save this now to our account. But first, let's go take a look at what we're gonna customize. We're gonna customize all of the H1 tags on the page and use our primary color from there. So what we can do is we can have our application layout with a special style tag. And this style tag is going to end up including a element or selector here for the root element and that's gonna be where we define our custom properties that we have in our app. So we're gonna name one called primary color. This is going to be our current user, dot, or our current account rather, dot uh, color. So this is going to render out that color onto the page and it will be nil by default right now. So we could even go and say, let's use um, you know, blue as the default. So when we define a, a variable in CSS, it's started or prefixed with two hyphens that defines a custom property um, or a CSS variable. And we can then use that inside of our code. So we can say, hey, let's take the H1. So let's set the text color of that to the variable primary color. And if we save that, let's actually uh, add our semicolon there for good measure. But you can immediately see that ES build has reloaded uh, the page for us automatically and uh, our text color is blue. So if we change this to green, then voila, it's green. And we can go to red and any other color and it's going to automatically change that for us. This is really, really nice. Now you can also define a default value here like blue or you can even do nested variables here. So maybe we have a secondary color that we wanna check and then we'll finally fall back to blue. If we didn't define any of those uh, variables, what we'll see is it defaults to blue because it tried to check these primary and secondary color values and they are not defined. So this is really cool and does a great job of allowing us to customize multiple variables here that we might want uh, as well. So if we add this back and we say hyphen hyphen primary color as the current account color, um, what we want here is for this to actually work with a nil value. Like we added the color field, we don't have any default values in the database yet. And what it's gonna do is kind of ignore this rule because if we click on primary color, it found the variable, but it's empty. So it's using that empty value here and just kind of ignoring it in the browser because it's like, well, this isn't valid. Um, and that's one of the reasons you might want to put a Ruby thing here where you um, output a string for the default color, or 
you can have this say if current account dot color then we'll render out that uh, primary color variable and now it will be back to blue because we are properly hiding this variable or custom property from the CSS now I want to point out this um, uh, because you know there are often times where you might not have a color or something like that but what's really cool is this propagates across um, to all of our other CSS so if we go into topography CSS where we display have all of our h1 um, colors and other typography related settings in jumpstart pro we can move this to there and that is still going to work so what will happen is this variable gets defined on the root and it actually applies to all the other CSS that we have on the page so it's going to apply here even though we're doing the definition of it up inside of our head tag there so that's really awesome. And if we go and now go to our account, edit the account, change the color, maybe we'll make it um, green. Then we can save our account. And Go Rails now is an H1 that displays in green. The dashboard H1 displays in green as well. And if you inspect this in the browser, you'll see that the color is green, and if you click on the link here for the primary color, it is defined as the hex value. So that is wired up so that we can define all of those. You can add the secondary color if you wanted, and this allows you to now really easily go make customizable themes that are visually different because you can do other colors, you can do other any other properties that you might want you might want to have like shadows that are bigger on some or smaller on others and you could even customize those properties as well so you have a lot of control what you can do um, with this you know, using this handy dandy color field that's built into the browser and custom css variables so that's it for this episode. CSS variables are something you might not have even realized existed. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully it helps you add some cool themes to your application as well. That's it for this episode. I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.